what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so this is going to be another screen five video we're going to be talking about this idea that i saw floating around on reddit regarding the killers and their potential motives in screen five so this is a rather interesting take on it i'll just say because i it actually got my mind thinking of what could they actually do with this type of scenario so just to give it like a, a build up to what i want to talk about we know that in the original film uh the cheerleader the blonde cheerleader came into the bathroom sydney went into the stall and she gave her little spiel on what she thought about sydney i know a lot of us myself included probably wanted to hit her <laughs> um and she ended up saying that you know she doesn't think that sydney made it all up and she was jealous or something to that effect and she wanted to make up this whole victim narrative because of the fact of what happened to her mother the year prior she said she's she's basically saying that what happened to her mother has caused her to become mentally unstable and she's the one who killed casey and steve and on top of that she ends it by saying she got her knowledge from ricky lake <laughs> so she has a conspiracy theory this user over on reddit shout out to the user roster 97 i hope i'm pronouncing your username correctly uh, their whole theory and i'll leave a link to the thread in the description of this video their whole theory is that screen five's killers will be two conspiracy theorists who met on some crazy online board and they're kind of like hero worshiping Stu and billy believing that sydney was the actual person responsible for the events of scream and billy and Stu were innocent sydney is the one who actually did the killings and she actually did snap after her mother died just like the blonde girl in the bathroom had alluded to now of course we know that's not true sydney going throughout the film would know that's not true we know what the truth is we know that billy and Stu actually were the ones who did that damage in the original film and we learned why they did what they did and we also learned how someone else later on in the trilogy played a factor in what kind of happened as far as like what happened to maureen and then billy and Stu going on to do their own thing after that motivation so we know what the truth is but then this whole conspiracy theorist angle will kind of tap into like the danger that goes into conspiracy theories and the harm that they can cause and another user commented how they feel like that goes right in tow with how relevant that is in today's society which i can kind of get behind maybe some of you can't but i do kind of like that idea of us having two people who are literally insane at that point of course because you've allowed your your theory to now get to you to such a degree that you're now out here doing exactly what billy and Stu actually did because you believe that they were innocent but you're out trying to make a point that sydney was the one who did it and of course at this point i still don't believe sydney would even be living in woodsboro she's gonna something's gonna happen that's gonna bring her back to town i do not believe sydney is living in woodsboro in screen five but they basically are doing all this in the hopes that it will get sydney's attention let's just say i'm kind of now just going off on how i would flesh this out a bit more uh Sydney is not living in Woodsboro, but these two conspiracy theorists are now taking all of this frustration out on the town of Woodsboro, wanting to drive Sydney out and bring her to town. And of course, they would have to do something to get her to come to town. And when Sydney gets to town, we get to the final confrontation between her and whoever these two individuals are. And that's when they, of course, go over their motive that they think that Sydney was the one who did the original Woodsboro killings. And the only reason they did this was to get back at sydney to some degree and make her out to be the one who did what happened in the original film kind of i guess make her confess in a way but then what they're going to do is of course frame her for their own wrongdoings because that's again how out there they are on top of her wanting to confess to what she had done in the original film they're going to frame her for uh their actions in this film and again that whole rhetoric would be around her still having snapped from the demise of her mother she never recovered from it and of course all of us watching and everyone else that were actually involved with the killings police included at this point <laughs> we know that these people are insane we know that's not the case but it is kind of just a cool 
cool angle not necessarily say it's my favorite angle but i do like this idea of how you are addressing the dangers that come with conspiracy theories and how some people could take it too far and do something like this because again anything's possible in this life so it's just kind of addressing the kind of harm that comes from these conspiracy theories that i know many of you know exist out there there's things regarding a lot of horrific tragedies that have happened that people have theories about what actually happened and some of them while they're interesting they're not necessarily of course that realistic either just as how this angle here from these people aren't that realistic but they're so out there and they're so insane they believe it to be true but us the audience we know of course that it's not true but however you would also have to tie into that what this has to do with the carpenter sisters since we know that the carpenter sisters are going to be a factor in this we know that in the audition tapes sam was described as having left her hometown after some events happened and little descriptions that came out about these characters sam is 24 she left her hometown she apparently was heavily medicated at some point in her life so maybe there's actually a third killer again this is from roster 97 on reddit maybe there was a third killer that's actually involved with these two conspiracy theorists but they actually don't even believe what these two are these two are actually saying they're actually here wanting to get revenge on sam and sam's family in this case tara carpenter because of something sam had done in her past that ties into why she left town but it also caused damage to this third killer that we're going to have revealed as a plot twist added on to these two conspiracy theories they will actually be the more interesting out of the three because they actually are not the ones that are completely insane they're still insane because they're doing killing but they're not co the conspiracy theories they're just using the conspiracy theorist angle to have partners and then get to sam for something that they actually have a vendetta against sam about they don't believe that sydney did the woodsboro killings they know it wasn't sydney they're just feeding off the stupidity of their two partners to use this as leverage to get to sam carpenter their target and something that she did in her past that relates to why she left town etc etc i like that angle i like that idea uh again i'll leave a description to it down in the, down in the uh or leave a link to it down in the description let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and miss a video in the description i have links to my social media accounts my facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course if there's any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future all that in my guys i will see you in the next video